Yelly Bio has revealed a precision fermentation dairy fat alternative on November 14th. If you remember some of my earlier feedback on precision fermentation milk that I've tried, it seemed like the products could use some work on the fat. It'll be interesting to see if there's any partnerships made with this company. Yelly Bio is a California-based food tech firm. They revealed their precision fermentation fat alternative during the Mista Growth Hack event in San Francisco. The company showcased its new solid hard fat through the presentation of dairy-free ice cream at the event. Last year, they secured $3.9 million in fundraising, and they're working towards formulating customized fats that enhance the flavors and functionalities of plant-based alternatives in the meat and dairy sectors. Dr. Don DiMasi, a former executive at Impossible Foods, is now Senior Vice President of Engineering and Biomanufacturing. Manufacturing. He's focusing on expanding process development and the company's biomanufacturing capacity to meet the demand for animal-free fats, particularly for alternative dairy products such as butter, cheese, and ice cream. The product contains half the saturated fat and five times the monosaturated fat found in coconut oil. In addition to its nutritional benefits, Yali Bio's new fat is recognized for its environmental friendliness compared to traditional dairy and coconut fats. Utilizing techniques similar to brewing beer, Yali Bio claims its fat production proves highly efficient, resulting in minimal greenhouse gas emissions and noteworthy supply chain transparency. So in this video, I want to look at a pitch that was done a number of months ago by the CEO Yulin Liu at the GFI Food Conference in San Francisco. I'm Yulin Liu, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Yali Bio. And we're working on animal-free designer fats with precision fermentation. This is our team. I started the company about two years ago and uh, with my co-founder Pong. And over this duration of time, we've recruited biologist, fermentation scientist, and uh, engineers and chemists really to build the core tech around making designer fats possible in the lab. I wanted to talk a little bit about fats. Again, I'm a, I'm a bioengineer by training and I've actually been working on fats and lipids for a very long time. Um, fats are often ignored or kind of unobvious, not obvious to consumers, but they're so important in biology. They're fundamental in biology, uh, proteins, carbohydrates, fats and lipids. They also make foods taste great as the other panelists has already shared and change the way our tongues perceive foods. And, you know, as what we can see here, in palm, in sunflower oils, in animals, right? fats are unknown, present. And that's actually one of the reasons when we thought about how to make fats with a precision fermentation platform, because the fatty acid biosynthesis are highly conserved. So that make it possible to make it in microbes. The scale of production and land impact impacts are massive too. Here is some data that we've uh, been collected over the, a decade between 2009 to 2019, where we see almost 50% of increase in terms of vegetable oils that's been produced. And these are massive scales. Um, palm is in 76 million tons uh, kind of production. And we see that across the board for vegetable oils, uh, as well as a uh, significant increase of animal fats. And these are huge stress point for our planet. So we're approaching it differently. We're looking at fundamentally how to change the carbon efficiency of converting starting carbon into the fats and lipids in a lot more efficient way compared to the land-based agriculture. We take these raw materials from renewable carbon feedstock and through a few days of cultivation in bioreactors leading to a high cell density fermentation 
that can accumulate large amount of fats and lipids within these uh, cultures. And our technology can really working on the designing aspect of these fats and lipids, where it changes the saturation, unsaturation, changes the chain length, and changes the positioning of these fats and lipids to better mimic the properties of what we're seeing with, uh, with animal-derived fats. And I wanted to share a bit more about our scientific process, which I think is really critical in terms of building uh, foundational technology. What we have is that we use a build, test, learn uh, process to really dive into how to construct the genetics of these strains, how to test them in lab scale and test them into bioreactor scales, we have tools to really analyze the carbon flux of these type of uh, uh, development work. So we have very clear understanding about how efficient these carbons can be converted into the finished product. Therefore, we have very clear knowledge around the techno-economics of these process and what are the cost bases to make these materials, which I think is critical in order to make uh, novel technology and novel ingredients to compete in a space where uh, it's very efficient, it's very low cost, and uh, uh, so it's very difficult competition. So that I think that's a critical component for novel technology development. And this is a sample of fats that uh, we extracted. This was uh, actually was developed almost uh, about a year ago. Uh, when we extracted our fats from our fermenters, what was surprisingly pleasant for us is the fats actually melts and uh, looks just exactly like a butter product. Uh, like, uh, uh, you know, Kiara has said, like, butter is the, the gold standard for, for fats. And uh, for us to see the material coming out of the fermenters behaving very much like a butter product was... Uh, was really a pleasant surprise. <laughs> and in terms of use cases, we create creamy richy fats, really has no trade-offs between taste, flavor, and functionality. Um, here are some examples that we're targeting. And uh, the reason we're picking the dairy products is because one is around the market adoption. We see a lot of uh, consumer willingness to pay for these category of products. And uh, also from uh, what Jason just described earlier, um, triglycerides or fats and lipids in particular in the form of butter fats, uh, they are so significantly important in dairy product formulation and it behaves very differently compared to uh, animal meat product, which you would need these adipose type of uh, technologies to, to combine. So, that's where we see uh, the opportunity in terms of our technology and the fats that we can produce uh, to really uh, uh, tackle these markets. And here's uh, application insights our food scientist has developed. Um, I think one of the chef mentioned about creaminess as a really important aspect in terms of dairy applications and, and fats. And uh, this is what you can see our scientists work with, our food scientists work with the the purified lipids that we have and uh, essentially um, did a number of tests. Uh, and you can see in some cases where, uh, you know, it created heavy cream type of properties. And uh, in some cases where the fats, uh, maybe we have a higher ratio of hard fat to soft fat. So it's solidified. So you can kind of see it on the other side of the, the tube that, uh, uh, you know, it become a solid fat. So it's really interesting in terms of application development and using designer fats in terms of um, adjusting these fat properties into specific applications of interest. Yeah, here are again, some examples of our profiles. As a company, we really managed to develop the technology to tune the profiles of saturates versus unsaturates. So we can, and the percentages of these uh, uh, fats. So we can make a range of melting point and uh, melting behaviors because of these ratios and pro profile differences. 
to make uh, application specific fast. For us, we want to become the go-to partner for precision fermentation fats by 2030. Um, and we focus really uh, strategically through meaningful partnerships and uh, manufacturing capacities. Um, so we looked at it in three categories uh, from feedstocks, uh, diversification of feedstocks are important. And uh, ideally the renewable carbon, if you can divert from uh, land-based agriculture uh, is really, really critical. I think that's what savers technology using CO2 is another example of, of uh, moving away from traditional carbon sources. And for us, fermentation and manufacturing to have meaningful partnerships so that as a technology innovator, as a young company of two years old, but be able to meet the demand of the market and get the production up, we're uh, you know, working with uh, these uh, strategic partners to, to make fermentation and manufacturing. Um, yeah, and these are examples of a number of these uh, um, markets we're, we're working on. Um, of course, um, fats and milk and dairy fats, they're, they're hugely important, not just in the dairy space, but as well as nutrition. So we're also looking at spaces beyond plant-based dairy uh, to, to see how our fats can improve uh, human nutrition. Um, so these are the partnership models that we have. We work with co-development partners, uh, wants better nutrition and a healthier planet, planet uh, overall. And uh, this is our team. We're a local company. We're based out in San uh, South San Francisco. Um, so um, yeah, very proud of the, what the team has done uh, in terms of building the core tech and really uh, we're getting a lot of demonstration of what we're capable to produce. Thank you. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.